Hi, welcome to Passion for Life with Dee and Friends, and I'm Dee, and I'm here with my friend, and you don't even know what we had to go through to get here, but we are so passionate, and we're going to bring you an amazing show, and this is one of my friends, one of my dear friends who has been coming back and sharing, and um, it's awesome that I'm going, been going through some stuff, and she just came in my life at the right time. But um, my passion is all about knowledge and giving people that knowledge So because knowledge is power and to have that best integrity of life. So and I'm Dee, and I have my, my friend, Dr. Swami. Hello. And um, we're going to talk about cancer today. Yeah. But before we talk about cancer, yes. what's your passion for life? Ah, uh, passion for life is uh, so that everyone owns their health mm. and uh, gets well informed about what it is they need to do to uh, to keep their standard of living, you know, as high as they can possibly keep it. Right. Once you've uh, got no health, or your health has deteriorated, so has your standard or your quality of life. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just really getting everyone on on target mm -hmm. with what their options are as far as health is concerned, what avenues they have, and um, you know, empowering them to sometimes take that brave leap to sometimes alternative medicine mm -hmm. and getting themselves uh, better their own uh, natural way. Well, that's why I think we were connected yep. for sure because for sure. I am on that same mission. Right. And when you came into my life, it was well, interrupted for about a year, yeah. and then we came back and mm. reconnected, and it was just a, a little introduction initially, and then it was like, whoa, here we yeah. go. <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's just been really right. excellent. Yeah, on my, on, I, it's, uh, you're a wonderful woman, and your, your advocacy is to be commended and supported, and that's why I'm here. And I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I was like, she's a regular now, at least once a month, so <laughs> life is good. <laughs> I'm very happy. The first time, she was like, oh, no, can I just call in? <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. We got to have you come. We don't. And she gave me so many excuses, but when she came, she's like, oh, okay. This is actually not that bad. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> So I was like, yay, <laughs> let's share, because right. it's all about empowering, like you said. True. It's important, and you do that where you have a, the detox bar, yeah. and people come from all over the place. I've seen them come from all over yeah. just because of what they heard from word of mouth, right. and that's amazing. It's very true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we yeah. no advertising. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 I walk in there and that place, you can't, you, you're there for hours just because, yeah. and people wait very patiently to, to get consultations with yeah. you. You're very true. Yeah. You're, uh, you're on the money because oh. I had to actually invest in benches, you know, because the wait time was just so long. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like inhumane to have these people standing for hours at a time. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> So they at least get them some benches. Yes, I appreciate that. <laughs> it's not so bad. It's not so it's bad. It's like, oh, well, you know what? I'll stand today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what time is she going to be in? <laughs> right. Right. right, Because it's, it's, it is sometimes a little, it but is. I know you're, you're spread, and you're trying to do the best you can for everybody, and that's amazing because I know with myself, that's why we're going to talk about cancer. It's, it's cancer awareness. Actually, it's breast awareness, but I think it's all about cancer in general because it's all, all of it is the same. Yeah, I, I don't really like the fact that they've segmented yeah. uh, October for Breast Cancer Awareness mm -hmm. um, Month, per se, mm -hmm. uh, because there's no Lung Awareness Month, there's no Colon Awareness Month. You know, it's, it's just really, it should be cancer awareness. And exactly. the other thing is you've got a, a number of women and men mm -hmm. who uh, are afflicted with breast cancer and are, go in remission, and when they come back, when unfortunately uh, the cancer comes back, mm -hmm. it comes back uh, and spreads to the lungs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, so the, the forebearer of the cancer was definitely, you know, the breast cancer mm -hmm. initially. Um, but all cancers, you know, breast cancer does not... 
um, attack in a different way mm -mm. than lung. It does exactly. not affect people less or more. Um, it also, I, I think what was taking place was uh, a, uh, within the industry, a sense of uh, apathy um, when it came to breast cancer. Right, right. Um, but that had a lot. I don't think that had much to do with the cancer. I think it's just the way that women were viewed mm -hmm. and women's health was viewed. Right. And that has surely um, evolved and come a long mm -hmm. way. And so, therefore, uh, the awareness and the heightened sensitivity mm -hmm. behind breast cancer uh, has also come a long way. Yeah. But you've got a ton of women who are suffering from colon cancer yeah. and different types of cancer yeah. and, and need the same level of sensitivity. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. um, it's, a, uh, it's a tough beast, that it cancer. Is. And you know, it's so funny because I remember when I was just growing up, Cancer wasn't prevalent. No, it wasn't. In 1950s, 70s, 60s, what have you, when people started getting diagnosed with cancer, it was like a shh, shh type of thing. People really didn't know what cancer was. Right. And so I, I just thought about that because yeah. I know my, de my grandfather, he suffered from stomach cancer. Oh, wow. And um, I think he passed away in 81 or so. And at that point, it was starting to materialize a lot more. Right. But he was actually a Pullman porter. Okay. And so he was on the road a lot. Right. So he was eating all those processed foods. And not only that, but um, that exhaust and emissions on the train. Exactly. That's a major exactly. hit. Environmental. Yeah. Happy, that was definitely. hard. Yeah, that's exactly. major. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if he was a Pullman porter for any extended period of which time. Which he was. Right. Then he was part of the train system when those men used to have to go almost into the belly of mm -hmm. the train, right mm -hmm. almost underneath the train in yeah. order to get baggage exactly. and so forth. So, um, yeah. But the thing is, is that you, you kind of, just like what we're doing, we're, we're piecing it together mm -hmm. and we're understanding. We're understanding that your grandfather mm -hmm. um, was exposed to uh, exponential uh, carcinogens mm -hmm. in terms of the environment. Mm -hmm. um, other contractors or supers mm -hmm. or laborers mm -hmm. who were in old buildings, mm -hmm. uh, mesothelioma. Yes, exactly. Um, Actually, as my father passed away with meso mesothelioma. Right. But that was because he was a police officer in the tunnel. Correct. Hello. So, right. So <laughs> they used to put the guys in the tunnel right. with the cars going through. Right. Oh, my. Right. <laughs> you but, but there was a connection. You yeah. know, there's this, so that's the yeah, connection. Yeah, and then yeah. the other one was, you know, you usually got lung or esophageal mm -hmm. yeah, because got, of mm -hmm. smoking. Right, right. You know, so there was always a connection. Mm -hmm. Now there's no connection. Mm -hmm. You've got vegans, cancer. Young, cancer. Mm -hmm. Old, cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, and there, uh, we in the, especially alternative mm -hmm. uh, practitioners like myself, um, I won't say like myself, but in, in the alternative uh, world or in, in alternative medicine, uh, we do point to food and diet mm -hmm. as triggers. Right. But I really think it is beyond that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I don't run to conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. but I have to say that um, the tendency that we have um, for everything to contain a carcinogen, mm -hmm. the toothpaste, I know, triclosan, yeah, yeah. the mouthwash, deodorant. the deodorant, um, shampoo, shampoo, <laughs> you know? carrageenan, yes, um, parabens, yes, oh god, um, suntan lotion, face lotion, body lotion. <laughs> At this point, it's almost like, yeah. mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you know, it's. The mindset, when you start looking at the list of ingredients, when you start looking at what causes the cancer, mm -hmm. and if you, and it's not a defeatist or fatalistic perspective, it is just kind of more realistic, right. it's almost like you have to say, well, 
it's not a matter of if you're going to get cancer. It's just a matter of when. Yes, and how bad. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. and how, how yeah. aggressive yes. is this exactly. thing going to exactly. be? Exactly. Because, I mean, you can't. The makeup has it. Mm -hmm. Makeup has the parabens. The mascara has it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The lipsticks have the lead. Yes, yes. You know, so you're, now you're bombarded yes. with just things that are attacking the body. So it's a matter of when right, exactly. is this going to happen? Exactly. When is my number going to be called? Right. And, you know, am I going to survive it? Am I not? Are they going to botch me up? Or, you know, what's the deal? So it's, it's, um, it's almost like the more we know now, and the less regulation that we have on these corporations that are making health and beauty, mm -hmm. food, um, you know, forget about the air, <laughs> <laughs> the environment. And what about the water? Well, that's the other oh, issue. Gosh. You know, so now <laughs> Flint woke up an entire animal, and now everyone should be saying, well, what is my municipal or my state and local government doing in terms of um, my, my water supply? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And even with, with New York, it's right. tampered with its own water supply in terms yeah. of fluoridation right, of exactly. the water supply. And why? Correct. Why do they insist saying that fluoride is important? Because when you're taking a bath and when you're brushing your teeth and washing your hair, Fluoride is known carcinogen. Correct. <laughs> so right. chlorine also can Correct. be a carcinogen. Correct. And see, I, I tell people, people, I, I have a lot of my friends, and, and I love them dearly, but they're like, well, you know, I pray over my food, and the food's okay, blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, that's it. You got some trusting friends. Okay. <laughs> 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 and I'm, I'm like, come on, guys. No. It's, right. This is man-made, so God can't can't protect you from this at at right. this point. You have to make some decisions and start. You're looking at your children and you're looking at your parents, and they're suffering from Alzheimer's and they're suffering from cancer or diabetes, juvenile diabetes, or or all this kind of stuff that they didn't have to do. Right. But okay, we don't we didn't know, but now we do know, and or let's get educated. Right, the apathy just isn't appropriate for the level of technology and the level of information that mm -hmm. we have. Exactly. This is, I mean, throughout the generations, one of the things that has been very uniform is the concept of having more information uh, arms you against supposed ignorance and therefore will arm you against those who are harming you. Right. And that's not the case. What's happening is, is that there's a plethora of information out there and is either A, we're not utilizing it, or B, um, we've got the type of mentality where we're still feeling like cancer is the other person's disease to get yeah, and not yeah. ours. Yeah. And even as the younger people start to go to chemotherapy sessions with their parents, for their parents, mm -hmm. myself included, right, exactly. um, you realize that, one thing I realized, I, you know, knock on wood, uh, you know, have not um, been able to separate myself from the cancer or the battle that my father had mm -hmm. because it was ours. Right. It wasn't his. No, exactly. It was ours. Well, you know, I just went through yeah. it. And so what, when... The park, the, you know, and, and on, forget <laughs> it, about the emotional it, it, stuff, oh. just on a very financial, the parking, oh, my the God. food, <laughs> the, the tolls, the time, oh, my the time goodness. away from work. Oh, shoot. This, that, the other. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And it's, see, you have to realize, my grandfather, mm. okay, that's on my dad's side. My dad, my mother, her mother. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a lot. They, and then they say, well, it's genetics. But guess what? Nobody else had it prior to that. Right. So, no, 
it's not genetics. Right. It's actually, we have the cancer in us. Everybody does. Right. But it's getting activated. Correct. So how is it getting activated? Right. Because we're putting toxins into our body. Very true. And it's giving, it's a food source. And it's... Food or environment, yeah. Or environment right. or what have you. And, it, and it's now able to multiply. Correct. And now what do we do to shut it off? Right. We have to actually starve it. Right. But we don't know how to starve it. Well, right. we do know how to starve it, but people don't know how to stop eating the bad things or putting the bad things into, or the, it's hard to actually put those bad things, stop. Okay, can't stop taking the shower. <laughs> right. But you can go and get a filter. You can go get a filter, but I think that the, the, um, the water kind of, Will that give you the cancer? I'm not going to say no, but I don't think that if someone were living in a vacuum, eating perfect food, mm -hmm. breathing perfect air, but taking a shower in kind of bad water, that it's going to be this societally rampant. Well, no, it. it you know, I'm not saying it's no, I the know. only thing. Right? No, I. But it does. It. Add to it. That's correct. You know, and that's what my concern is. I looked at my grandma because a lot of people we take showers every day, right. and technically, I, I look at my grandma. She was one of those once a, a once a week bath taker. Okay. And she just washed up. Right. And I've actually, I believe, a lot of the holistic community are starting to go back to that. Right. Because it's me. it's <laughs> not, not there yet either. But but but. <laughs> They saying that it it's not a necessary thing right. just to wash certain areas where you need to, and you take that bath once a week or take that shower or whatever. Right. I can't do it yet because it's just not me. There's but. a ton of filters out there that you can use. Mm -hmm. That I know. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that you know, there's a number of people that will go, I, I have a number of clients that will have gone and gotten the uh, alkaline machines. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to name any oh, no, one well, particular one. Yeah, but I, you know what yeah. I mean? no, but see, I don't believe in that either right. because that's a chemical. Correct. So that's another toxin right. that you're putting into your system. Right, but one of the other things with that is is that First of all, it's thousands of dollars yeah, and yeah. only accessible to those who have mm -hmm. thousands right, of dollars right, right, to spend right. exactly. arbitrarily on exactly. something like that. Exactly. And then on top of all of that, um, there's no guarantee, mm -mm. especially with all that other stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, this alkaline machine is going to be the, the game changer. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when there isn't a, uh, a change in the other thing. Right. No, definitely. Because if you do the same thing, it's going to right. re result in the same, Correct. Um, well, result. Have the same yeah. result. Yeah. yeah, because I know that a lot of people, they have combated the cancer. Right. And they've gone through the toxic chemotherapy or what have you, or even just changed their habits and, and were able to alkalines their body by doing foods and, right. and, and certain things that they're supposed to do. Right. But then they go back. Right. <laughs> and then... Because it's so much around us. Yeah. And yeah. I also think that um, there is a, there is a, uh, a mental state mm -hmm. out there when it comes to cancer. Cancer is being marketed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is a marketing account. machine, and I realized this when um, Sloan Kettering became a cancer center. Mm -hmm. It was a hospital right. at first, right. and then it became the mm -hmm. cancer center. Mm -hmm. And in becoming the cancer center, um, in order for you to sustain yourself, mm -hmm. you have to now market cancer. Right. And exactly. you have to be able to capitalize on cancer. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, cancer has got to proliferate. You know, you can't just have one or two people having cancer. <laughs> exactly. And think that you're <laughs> going to maintain a whole right, hospital. Exactly. And all these annexes that you have all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it lends to the uh, 
school of thought where, just as you said, mm -hmm. before cancer was an anomaly. Right. Exactly. Every once in a while, yeah. you would hear someone getting cancer. Exactly. And it very rarely was someone young. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. Um, it, this was really people at the last stages yes. of their life. Without a doubt. And... Often they perished mm -hmm. because they were at the last stages exactly. and they were in their yeah, 80s. Exactly, exactly. You know, once in a blue moon, you mm -hmm. would hear someone mm -hmm. in their 50s. Yes. And then right after that, you would mm -hmm. hear that they were a chain smoker three packs right. a day. Exactly. You know, because um, even back then, smoking wasn't even an issue. Right. Because people, hey, that was correct. that was something that everybody did. That's correct. Or it was it was just a style. Yes. It was their a lifestyle. Fad. Yeah. And what have you. And until they realized that that was part of the challenges of this increasing cancer epidemic. Right. That they actually started putting warnings out there for right. people to say no, we need to stop that. And to lend to your point, when you have a situation like that, and you've got people who are smoking from at least the early 1900s, mm -hmm. 1920s right. or so. Exactly. You've got these cigarettes, mm -hmm. you know, the advent of the cigarette, right. 20s exactly. or 30s, exactly. and then going on up, and then throughout all the wars, and then the factories, and the this and the that. And you don't have this cancer epidemic. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And then you've got people eating Crisco, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Crisco, yeah. fat mm -hmm. back, yeah. 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 you know, there's no need for grease because we just put a whole slab of Hello. pork in the pan. Hey, and you know what? My grandmother had her little can of Crisco yes. on the side. You just keep on pouring it in there right. after you, and then you reuse it and what That's have you. That's correct. And life was good. She lived to 101, okay? <laughs> That's it. Not a problem. Right. And then, <laughs> you know, so all of the... All of mm -hmm. what we consider triggers today yeah, right. were staples back then. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you now have to say, well, what's different? What's different from the fat back that grandma had mm -hmm. and the fat back, or not even grandma, but great grandma had, mm -hmm. and the fat back that we're supposedly not supposed to use now, yeah. that fat back was smoked in a place where you could see it. You know, you kind of had to like pitch off some of the ants mm -hmm. every once in a while <laughs> exactly. and you know but you saw it it yeah, was smoke right. you 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 know you had the little thing and it was smoking up it was real right <laughs> now you know you've got smoked almonds you're like i know these people didn't put this thing <laughs> over a smoker and when you look at it it's got all this stuff same thing with the bacon it's the not bacon real nitrites it's got sulfides nitrates mm -mm -mm -mm. And you're saying to yourself I know that wasn't in the bacon before, and so this is the key. Yeah. The bombardment of the human body with all of these chemicals right. that are creating um, neurological uh, triggers, cellular triggers, that um, immunodepressants, mm -hmm. which really tear the body down and allow the body to now be open exactly. to... Uh, you know, to this thing called cancer that right. we think. The other thing is, is that our lifestyle has gotten away from us. Yeah. We are entirely stressed. Hello. The concept, <laughs> the concept of what achievement is mm -hmm. today yeah. is out of control. And for every overachiever, myself included, we really have to sit back and look and say, are you really living your life or are you just, is this life running you into the ground? Exactly. You know, you've got to look at um, the relationships mm -hmm. that you have. Yeah. Um, of my clients, of my patients. Mm -hmm. um, for every woman that comes to me, mm -hmm. I have not had any cases with men with breast cancer mm -hmm. as of yet, but for every case where there has been a woman who has come to me with breast cancer, I can put, like I can put money on it, mm -hmm. that they have either lost a parent or mm -hmm. a loved one, mm -hmm. or they have had um, a real hard time in their romantic relationship mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. which there's been infidelity yeah. or some sense yeah. of disloyalty. Mm -hmm. um, and 
uh, the third is really a sense of almost like a personal hopelessness. Yeah, self-esteem is like just not Well, not even the self-esteem, almost like not being able to depend on anyone. Really? Wow. All, only being able to depend on themselves right. and having everyone else depend on them, yeah. but them not being able to depend on anyone. Do themselves. And it yeah. becomes a really big thing, and that's one of the reasons why we're finding um, black women especially mm -hmm. High with fibroids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The fibroid count is high. Right, right. Um, the ovarian cancer right. risk. This used to not be our disease. No, no. And it is becoming yeah. uh, not only our disease, but when we are afflicted, we are now extremely resistant mm -hmm. to um, it going into remission. Right. So it's a huge deal. No, definitely. Huge. And actually, I was looking at the statistics, and they were mm -hmm. saying the Asian population is is really getting more afflicted with the cancers and Correct. stuff they like that. They used to have a point. lot of stomach cancer, yeah. <laughs> and that had a lot to do with the ulcers. It right, had a lot right. to do with uh, that whole sense of overachievement, mm -hmm. as well as a... Um, uh, a communication style mm -hmm. that was more based on uh, protocol and less on self-expression. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they used to yeah. get higher rates of cro of, of uh, stomach cancer. Right. Now it's all over the place. Yeah, well, I know that I always say that it's the body, mind, and spirit. You really have to have all that in balance. Correct. If you don't have part of it in balance, you, you are subject to having some kind of um, disease to attack your body. That's correct. So you need that sleep. You need that stress free, and you have to, or you have to learn how to deal with the stress free. Right. It's, because I know with myself, with dealing with it, I have to start learning how to breathe. Right. And let it go because I, I get that oxytocin breathing and getting it out because. I go crazy sometimes right. because dealing with the job and, and then living just for the weekend is not long enough. That's <laughs> yes, correct. It's just not. And so, the quality of life exactly, is greatly diminished. Exactly. So you really have to enjoy life every day, not just for the weekend. <laughs> you know. And I, I think also there's no sense, I remember um, growing up, mm -hmm. and there was a sense of the end of the day. Mm that the day ended, mm -hmm. you know, school ended, mm -hmm. five o'clock, right. you know, your parents were home, and that was home time, right. and that was family time, right. and there's none of that now. This is true. School extends, work extends into home, mm -hmm. and everything is blurred. Yeah, it's true. And so when you look at the fact that you've gone to work, now, like eight o'clock, it's no, no, no. I don't know anyone that works nine, nine o'clock anymore. Mm -hmm. So you come into work at eight. Um, you're stressed out for the entire day, <laughs> up until, and it's no oh longer. Gosh. So it's no yeah. longer eight till three. Yeah. You know, or eight till four. Right. It's you know eight until six. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, um, and then you come home, and then the stress of home, and what family life is now, mm -hmm. and then while everyone is supposedly watching TV, you're now in your home office finishing up work that you didn't get to do for your full day. So there's no, uh, there's no sense of time for yourself yeah, anymore yeah. or your family. Well, we have to learn how to make that time for ourselves. And it's, it's, it can be difficult, but it can be done. You're right. And it's very important to do that. But I also think that culturally, we've gone so far left as far as expectation, mm. um, especially as you start getting to uh, corporate jobs, private mm -hmm. sector jobs. Um, you don't do that extra work, you're not going to keep your job. This is true. <laughs> you're not. You're not because you've got some idiot who's emailing 10 o'clock in the night, you know, like nightcap. <laughs> exactly. and, and if you don't answer it, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. now you look like you're aloof and mm -hmm. you don't know what you're mm -hmm. doing. So, you're right. You're true. You know, I, thank so, goodness I don't, I don't even deal with that. Right. But I have my other stuff. Right. So, but with, when I leave there, I'm like, I'm out. 
because I'm not making it like that. So I don't need to. Correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's so many other people who yeah. are in the corporate yeah. sector, mm -hmm. yeah. um, who, or not even corporate, just private sector, yeah. Yeah. who have to extend. And we're not even talking about people who are hard laborers. Right, right. Who um, start at six, five, six in the morning and are still going up until seven o'clock. Right. You know, and what kind of demand that must be on the body. But um, this thing that we call cancer, I don't think, um, I don't think we're going down the right avenue mm. if we feel that there already is not a cure or a headway to the cure. I believe that we're very close to, or if not, they have something. Well, I believe they have cures. Right. And I know there's a lot of people have that same belief that the cures are there. Right. But since it is a business, right. and they don't want those cures to come out. Correct. So we're going to actually take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Sounds like a plan. Okay. I'll be here. Okay, cool. We'll be right back. Luxury Coach is a full-service limousine and party bus company. Family-owned and operated, we are an industry leader with over 25 years of experience in providing best-in-class luxury transportation for your special event. Whether it's your precious wedding day, an all-day wine tour out east, your high school prom, that special birthday, or just an amazing night on the town, our professional chauffeurs stand ready to ensure your special event is truly special. Galaxy Luxury Coach has one of the largest and modern party bus fleets in the New York area. Our party buses are simply nightclubs on wheels. Concert sound systems, light shows, lasers and strobes, multicolor LED lighting brilliantly lights your party bus inside and out. For corporate and more laid back events, we will cater to your specific needs and requests. What sets Galaxy aside from all others in the luxury transportation industry is our attention to detail in customizing our services to your special event. At Galaxy, it's all about you and your guests. Galaxy customers return time and time again because they know they can trust Galaxy to help deliver those lifetime memorable moments. Step aboard and let your Galaxy experience begin. Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash in detail center. Hot hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. See any discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. Professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Galaxy Luxury Coach is a full-service limousine and party bus company. 
Family owned and operated, we are an industry leader with over 25 years of experience in providing best in class luxury transportation for your special event. Whether it's your precious wedding day, an all day wine tour out east, your high school prom, that special birthday, or just an amazing night on the town, our professional chauffeurs stand ready to ensure your special event is truly special. Galaxy Luxury Coach has one of the largest and modern party bus fleets in the New York area. Our party buses are simply nightclubs on wheels. Concert sound systems, light shows, lasers and strobes, multicolor LED lighting brilliantly lights your party bus inside and out. For corporate and more laid back events, we will cater to your specific needs and requests. What sets Galaxy aside from all others in the luxury transportation industry is our attention to detail in customizing our services to your special event. At Galaxy, it's all about you and your guests. Galaxy customers return time and time again because they know they can trust Galaxy to help deliver those lifetime memorable moments. Step aboard and let your Galaxy experience. Hi, welcome back to Passion for Life with Dean and Friends, and I'm here with my my friend. Hi, friend. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> and we just running our mouths and um, saying how it's tough out here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing all the bad things that we should be, we know better. Right. But, hey, it's hard. It is hard. But we got to get better, Yeah. okay, because we don't want to fall victim to all the crap that's out here because we do know better so when you know better you're supposed to do better so we got to start doing better yeah what we were talking about is how culturally mm. um our activities gear us towards uh a cancer inviting mm -hmm. lifestyle yeah. that's the best way i can put yeah. it yeah you know, I, I know I'm not the only one that sleeps with my cell phone in the bed. And oh, I know no. better. Like, I'm a practitioner. I'm one of the first people. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's right there. There's no night. And even if you have a nightstand, yeah. it's still right there. Yeah, it's, it's right there. Who And for the people who, I, uh, I have a, a colleague. He's actually a practitioner friend, Brother Rashawn. Mm -hmm. And he has no cell phone. Wow. Right? No yeah. cell phone. And will he live till a million years old? Most likely. <laughs> right? But when I said to Brother Rashawn, and he's, he's, uh, he's got Sundial up in the Bronx. Uh -huh. Huge. And Sundial is yeah, huge. Yeah, no, I heard of it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now I think that he may own, now that I look at it, I think his company may even own skincare and like Nubian Heritage. Now that I, I'm, but oh, I'm really? not sure. Oh, okay. I'm not okay. sure, so don't quote me on okay. it. Okay. Um, and he said, you know, I don't have a cell phone. I said, you don't what? And I looked at this man like, such a smart man. <laughs> no phone. What is this? Is he living in caves? Yeah. But he's practicing what he preaches. Right, exactly. And, exactly. and at the end of the day, um, will we get in touch with him? Yeah, eventually. Eventually. We'll get, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, Just whatever. like we used to. Right. We'll get in touch. <laughs> Not necessarily when we want him, but when he decides to be around. Exactly. But at the end of the day, um, you know, here we are, mm -hmm. cell phone accessible, a uh, couple of cell phones, uh, tablet, email, you know, it's everything. No, You lose really. your cell phone, you literally oh start the party. Oh, my gosh. Well, the other day, I, I was out of town, and I remember I had the cell phone and the some other charging things, probably my iPad and what have you. I couldn't sleep. Right. I couldn't, I, I, it was just like too much over there. And I had the worst night's sleep. So the next day I had to actually move everything to the other side of the room because <laughs> it kind of affected my whole head. Right. I said, oh, my gosh, it was crazy. Or, right. or I think I switched beds so that wasn't so close to all the crap. Right. I was like, uh-huh, I can see right. how that stuff can mess you up. <laughs> yeah, without question. I mean, I, I had accidentally gotten salad dressing in my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put, okay. it, I put it in the bag. <laughs> I had a salad in my uh -huh. bag, uh -huh. and then I put the phone in the bag. Okay. And so the, the salad leaked out mm -hmm. of the container into the, to the phone. I was about to say something. But 
into the phone. <laughs> and so I, I open up the phone and I see it, electri you know, in shock, shaking. And I said, <laughs> what happened to the phone? And then I see the black screen and I said, oh, no. Because everybody who's ever lost a phone knows Hold that on. once they can't turn on the phone, you can't get your data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did everything. Everything. When I say everything, yeah. everything. And mortified. Pictures, this, that, the just and I'm not a picture taker. Like in my in my mm -hmm. entire phone, I may have hundred and fifty pictures. Mm -hmm. But that's arbitrary stuff. You yeah. know, like I, I had to take pictures of two documents today. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not selfies or anything right, like right, that. Right. But this is that my point my my point is, you know, we have really become a, a culture mm -hmm. that invites cancer. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. we do activities that put us at a yeah. higher risk. Yeah. And when you really look at it, the reason why it's difficult is because it is part of the culture. So it is very difficult to just say, oh, no, who, who's going to really say? I'm going to get rid of the cell phone. I'm not, nobody's going to say that. There's no way. No way. Not if you want to do business. That's it. And then, <laughs> and then this, is how, this is how much a part of the culture it is. If you don't have it, people don't take you seriously. That's when you know it's culture. If I say to you, okay, give, the first thing is, okay, give me your number. Oh, no, I, my home number. Oh, no, give me your cell phone. Yeah. No, I don't have a cell phone. Oh, I'm not doing business with her. She's not serious <laughs> about life. No cell phone. Okay, no problem. <laughs> we'll be in touch. Yeah. And that never will happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because we're like this. Yeah. Email, cell phone, yeah. what have you. Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. cell phone, yeah. then email. Right, exactly. I, don't, I can't tell you how many people I've done business with, mm -hmm. and you, yourself included. Yeah. We've done business. I don't know their home address. Mm -hmm. I don't know their business address, no. mm -mm. we have exchanged yeah. thousands of dollars <laughs> based on a phone number and an email and some goods transporting yeah. Yeah. back yeah. and forth yeah. or services back right. and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it's, it's different. No, it is a different world. That's why we have to start educating ourselves right. and, and our people to say, well, okay. And do some introspection and yeah, really yeah. stop it's ourselves and say. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Stop <laughs> ourselves and wait a second. Yeah. yeah. Is, is the phone really necessary in the bed? Woo. <laughs> is, it, is it really? No, it's scary. Yeah. It's very scary. Yeah. yeah. And how much um, a part of this so-called lifestyle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we are actually, and, and be clear, it is with everything. Yeah. Toothpaste, the triplicent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the carrageenan. Definitely, definitely. You know, and... I actually have changed up a little bit. And generally, sometimes if I don't have um, toothpaste, I'll just use some of the noni. Right. Or um, I use coconut oil or okay. whatever. Yeah, because I do swirling. Um, what is it? Swishing and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. oil pulling. The pulling. And, and, and all that. But I, I really look at anything that I put on my skin, on, in my body, or through my mouth, or what have you, even though the mouth is better than putting it on your skin right. or, your, or your hair or what have you because right. you have no filters. Correct. So the fil non-filtering versus the filtering into your mouth is probably a better, if you can't eat it, you really don't want to put it on your skin. That's very true. You know, and so. that should be a good rule of thumb. Exactly. Why don't we... Take this time. How much time do we have now? Um, we got about 15 minutes. How about we list some really great top 10 herbs, mm -hmm. top five lotions and oils mm. that help to either uh, promote a cancer-free lifestyle or help to actually, or is known to uh, be correlated to uh, Fighting cancer. That would be great. I, actually, we had the phone um, out here, so if anybody had wanted to make some phone calls, okay. in, that would be okay, too. So I don't know whether they're putting the phone number on there because I don't remember it. Okay. <laughs> okay. But they may just throw that on there. But, yeah, go 
for it? Because I know you have a lot of good um, knowledge in regards to that. There's a, there are a number of herbs out there mm -hmm. that um, are really um, ranking mm -hmm. high in terms of their cancer fighting. Right. Um, well, you have properties. to keep my noni number one. One of the no, noni is like Big number time. one. <laughs> no, Anti-inflammatory yes. and um, anti-cancer. It's definitely yeah. it, the noni is definitely in the mm -hmm. top ten. But right. what I would also um, like to encourage your your mm -hmm. viewers and your mm -hmm. listeners when you take pills or regular Western pharmaceuticals, you can take one pill. These things are lab made. So the potency of it is already created in the lab. Mm -hmm. When you're taking plants, when yes. you're taking herbs, yes. you have to take them with a good amount of frequency mm -hmm. and a very high frequency. So Consistency. High correct. Yes. And high dosage. Yes. So yes. don't think that, uh, I've had people say, well, you know, I drink a cup of the soursop tea. Oh, you know, it's, it's a cup. <laughs> you have to be every day, yeah. twice a day, sometimes, no. sometimes three times. If you depending. have, yeah. If you have cancer, mm -hmm. you literally are bombarding mm -hmm. yourself yes. on an hourly yes. basis yes. with yes. an entity mm -hmm. that is anti-cancer yeah. or that fights the cancer. Right. Exactly. So one of the top tens. I'm not going to number them because mm -hmm. I think that. <clears throat> Uh, let's just put it as the most, some of the most important mm -hmm. uh, herbs. Uh, we've definitely mentioned noni. Mm -hmm. The anti-inflammatory properties as well as the cellular regenerative properties of noni yes. definitely ranks it. Mm -hmm. um, when you take the noni, be clear that the, the noni that um, you are affiliated mm -hmm. with um, is the hardcore uh, good stuff that has a lot of the attributes of the plant mm -hmm. um, and the herb intact right. and the fruit exactly. intact. Exactly. And that's what you want. You don't right. necessarily want a noni that, or any plant that has been subject to a lot of heat. Exactly. Because once that's done, then, you know, it's like with anything, the plant is dead. Right, right. Um, so let's, uh, let's always look at that noni. Um, anti-inflammatory and I'm going to tell you just kind of very quickly the last time I was on I was not feeling well at all and you had given me mm -hmm. the noni and mm -hmm. I can't tell you what an about face mm -hmm. my countenance my disposition mm -hmm. as well as my health and yeah. you know just being pain-free yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can definitely uh, say that that noni is 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 uh, is a-okay in yeah. my book yeah, it's really yeah. a, an excellent anti-cancer mm -hmm. um, uh, product. The other one that's got, that has gotten a ton of buzz is something called graviola mm, or yes, soursop. Yes, yes. Yeah, and the, yeah. Uh, <coughs> both mm -hmm. the fruit mm -hmm. and the herbs, right. um, they have been recently at the forefront mm -hmm. of a lot of anti-cancer studies yeah. and it's been winning and giving mm -hmm. extremely positive results. Right. But the problem is when you're dealing with the soursop leaf, um, or even the fruit, you have got to take this five to six hours a day. Yeah. Um, five to six times a day. Yeah. So when you take it, you're taking about 12 to 16 ounces. Mm -hmm. And you're making about, say, seven or eight leaves. You're making a pretty concentrated concoction. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, you're, you're bombarding your system. You always look at it as your, ba your body is the battleground. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you're going to um, wage war against this cancer that's waging war on your cells exactly. and trying to get out of control. So when you've got a war, you know, when, and I hate to say it this way, but, you know, you're, you're like a bombardier. So you're not just <laughs> going to just drop one bomb and then keep it moving. Yeah. You're going to drop a whole yeah. bunch yeah. of bombs yeah. Yeah. to annihilate right. so that this thing doesn't attack again. Right. And one of the other things you have to understand, especially for those who have taken chemo or who have gone to chemotherapy or radiation route, please be aware that because you have taken chemo mm -hmm. or you have taken uh, radiation, it does not mean that now your system is no longer 
uh, in cancer cell mm -hmm. production mode. That's not what that means. Mm -hmm. What has happened, they have gotten rid of the tumor or the basal cells or the, um, the lymph nodes uh, or whatever the entity is that may be either carrying the cancer cells or that has been invaded by the cancer cells. But that does not mean that uh, we are cancer free. And mm -hmm. it does not mean that our system is now clean right. or exactly. um, healthy. Mm -hmm. It's not what that means. No. So to take this wall, for example, if I've got some wall, some mold on this wall, then what's going to happen if I cut out this little piece that has mold? That's great. I can then take another piece from somewhere else, patch it up, tape it, and put it back. We've got a call? Yeah, we got a call. Great, fantastic. Okay. But once I put that back, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that this mold is not going to come back yeah, because I funny. haven't gotten rid of what created no, the mold exactly. in the first place. No, exactly. And that's place. what we have to figure out. Good. You know? Let's Hi. Take caller. Welcome to Passion for Life with Dean and Friends. Um, who, who do we have on the call? We have Roxy. Hi, Roxy. How are you doing? Good. Um, welcome to Passion for Life. This is one of my friends, actually. She's been, she's been on the show. <laughs> How can um, you want to have, you have a question for Dr. Swami? Really, um, it's a, just a comment that it's a very interesting show. Oh, well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, Ms. Roxy. We appreciate that. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know whether they can hear you. I don't think they can hear you. Actually, let me see what I can do. <laughs> okay, can you say that again, Ms. I Roxy? I really don't have a question. I just really um, have like a comment overall because... You know what, do me a favor and take, um, turn down your, your computer, okay? Because I can hear the feedback. <laughs> Oh, you can't, oh, they can't hear you. Okay. You know, Rox, thank you so much for c calling because I think there's a challenge. But um, we definitely appreciate your call in. Right. So for everyone who's out there, uh, what Ms. Roxy said is that she found the, the, uh, the, call, the, the show to be extremely um, interesting. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Oh, okay. yeah, we can hear you now. <laughs> so I found that it was very interesting um, on the subject of cancer because a lot of, you know, African Americans such as myself always felt that you got cancer through your genes. It was something that came through you through hereditary. But listening to the show, it shows that cancer can come from so many different other things nice. as what we use on our body or put into our body. Excellent. So for us to be educated about the whole issue of cancer, I think is something that is very needed mm -hmm. and very important because we only really tend to want to know about something once we are attacked mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. But to have the awareness before we is attacked and to prevent ourselves from being victims of it, I think that this was an excellent show to show us that knowledge and understanding of something that you may not come in contact with, but how to prevent yourself if you do come in contact with the cancer. Because in today's society, even when you watch a TV, there's lawsuits, you know, stating that if you was a victim of cancer and wasn't problem. given an mm -hmm. option yes, to get yes, different yes. type of chemo to where your hair got lost. You know, it's so many things that's distracting us from really trying to want to be even educated about it because every time you turn around, it's a deadly disease that seems to have an endless course. So we're more afraid of it than really trying to find out what causes it and how to prevent from getting it. No, it's definitely 
true. And I, actually, a lot of people do think it's genetic, but I, I now know it's definitely not genetic. Right. Well, there can be some genetic aspects, mm -hmm. but so rare are the genetic aspects. Mostly it's epigenetic right. genetics. Right. And I didn't get into it. We didn't really get into Well, we basically talked about it. Right. Because it we didn't is label it. Epi, yeah. Epigenetics is the environment. And people are starting to see that it's just environmentally caused. So we're going to be wrapping it off up. But thank you for being out there and sharing and, and, and caring and, and calling in and supporting us and keep on supporting us. And Thanks, Ms. Roxy. Yeah, we'll talk oh, real soon. Thank you. Okay. Uh, knowledge really is power, cool definitely. Thing. Thank you. Have a great night. Good okay, bye-bye. So let's get a couple of more because we only have like three minutes. Got so it. let's get, so get the list the, out. The soursop, the graviola. Right. Um, strong correlate to uh, cancer fighting, especially cells. Mm -hmm. So um, if you are uh, having issues with lymphoma, mm -hmm. um, cancer cells, not so much tumors, mm -hmm. but definitely the cell on the cellular level, mm -hmm. the uh, soursop, the graviola is excellent. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's partner in crime, um, which is called guinea hen weed. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. The guinea hen weed is excellent, and those two together are the one-two punch. Mm -hmm. Where the soursop kind of attacks the cells, mm -hmm. and the guinea hen weed helps to attack tumors. Mm -hmm. Um, another good one, sheep sorrel. Really? Yes. Sheep sorrel is excellent. And one of the things um, that the sheep sorrel, you must use the leaves, the bark, and mm -hmm. the root. Mm -hmm. And in using that, you will use uh, a very strong, it's, a, it's, a, it's obviously a plant, mm -hmm. and you would use all aspects of it and boil it for a very long time. So when mm -hmm. you boil it, you're not boiling it like you're boiling Lipton tea. Mm -hmm. You're actually boiling this thing in and always get yourself a glass pot yes okay, okay. you don't want to use um, aluminum or mm -hmm. any kind of metals with which will interact with the plant you want glass and you uh, boil it under low fire for maybe about an hour to an hour mm -hmm. and a half if you're doing the bark much longer um, another good one in a rush um, some really, really dynamic ones called Ganoderma, which is a mushroom, mm -hmm. uh, Lyceum, right, right. Um, which is uh, excellent. Uh, it's a wonderful mushroom, helps with immunofunction. But what definitely. about chaga? Chaga is excellent, okay. but there's uh, different types of chaga. The okay. ones that we carry is the Siberian chaga, okay. which is uh, the most potent. Mm -hmm. um, that is uh, wonderful. And also the Essiac okay. group, which is uh, named after Marie Essiac, which is a nurse. Oh, yes. I, that's a combination, yes, right? Yes, correct. It's of, sheep of sorrel, yes. burdock. Right. Uh, there are two other herbs right, in right. there. Right, right. I heard and about. Actually, well, you know what? What I'm going to do is, because we're running out of real time now. Yes, we are. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to get a list of what you recommend right. some of those and I'm going to post it because I know I don't know whether you're on Facebook or not we're on Facebook but I'm not on Facebook I know you're, you're better I know, than that I, know I know I know well I'm going to get the list I'm going to add it to our picture okay. and and actually the show good and we'll probably do the show again not you know we'll, we'll right. continuation I think that would be by a good next idea month. yeah that would we, be a very we good can idea. definitely do that next right. month I mean okay. I uh there's a couple of people who this week I have found um, have been diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to know, um, keep strong. Uh, do not hide it. Right. Get exactly. some support. Exactly. There are people who love you. Even if your own immediate group does not show mm -hmm. support, exactly. forget about them. Exactly. Go towards those that support mm -hmm. you, that care about you. I love you. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, Tears are coming to my eyes. Yeah. Well, but, we love you, definitely. And I'm going to do everything I can to reverse this thing so that you and I will be uh, old together, hopefully 105, and you won't have to worry about this thing anymore. No. It's, 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 it's not, just because you have cancer doesn't mean that you have to die. You, don't have to, you can still live and, and thrive. 
So we're going to thrive and keep that passion for life. Next week, come on out and um, enjoy. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Okay.